Okay, so you can see that the results here are are pretty impressive. Uh, this this has to remind you a lot of all clads chrome and AK's uh, 477 chrome. Um, I'm going to do like Christian says and let this sit until tomorrow so we see if the shine comes up anymore and then we'll look at how at how durable it is because we know that with all clad chrome especially it'll rub right off of, of uh, a smooth surface so hopefully this will be better in that respect but you can see that I sprayed it in different thicknesses right here I did two layers right here I did three over here, I just kept kind of stacking it up because I wanted to see how, how it worked and how it affected the finish. And so right here, I built up like five or six layers. And you can see, I still have really impressive reflectivity. It's not quite as hard of a reflection as it is over here where I only have three or four layers. But still, that is just really impressive. Um, so, I've got high hopes for this stuff. We'll see what happens. Okay, I want to return back to this same Russian green and see if, after talking to Christian, I can get some better results without the airbrush clogging up and uh, without having so much difficulty cleaning it. And on the theory that there may have been some residual lacquer thinner maybe in there that caused that, um, I've got nothing but water in the cup of this airbrush right now. And I'm going to bubble that up and dump it out. sure that there is nothing but water in here. Okay, I feel pretty good about that. The last thing I sprayed was the uh, chrome that you just saw, so there hadn't been anything weird in here. And uh, So I'm going to start out with with it unthinned so that I'm back to, oh, that pipette is totally clogged up. Let's get a clean pipette. It's probably best anyway. I have a tendency to be real frugal with my pipettes, sometimes maybe more than I should be. So anyway, there we go. That is pure paint. Now, I also want to do another black basing test using the uh, color blender. But I don't feel like spending a whole shit ton of time doing black basing patterns. So I'm going to use these super cool masks that I got. I uh, got these off of eBay. I don't even remember the name of them, but they are very cool and very handy for what I'm doing here. So, So isn't that cool? The whole idea with black basing is to, when you do the marble coat, to get yourself a nice random pattern of splotches. And 
uh, you can see how quickly it's possible to do that with those masks. This gives you a slightly different look than when you do it purely with an airbrush. These splotches are a little harder edged, obviously, but you can come in and add some variety to that by just then overspraying a few of those areas and doing whatever you want to do. Again, the whole point with black basing is randomness. So I really like this. It's fast and it's effective. So now what I want to do is put a blend coat over the top of that. And I want to use this color blender. Now the way that Christian explained this to me is that this basically just reduces the opacity without reducing the viscosity. Uh, so basically what you're doing is just diluting the concentration of pigment without reducing the strength of the paint. So what I'm assuming is that this is a little bit like a clear uh, acrylic varnish. So at any rate, uh, we, I don't have any instruction on what ratios to use. So I'm gonna go with what I would normally go with on black basing for a blend coat and do like uh, two to one, where it's two parts reducer and one part paint. Um, and I'm just totally eyeballing that. So we'll see what we get. You can see that it doesn't appear to affect the color much, if any. Um, it uh, still looks a lot like just paint to me, so we'll see what happens. Um, again, this is something that you're gonna have to sort of experiment with and, and dial in on your own. Uh, to suit your personal taste. But it is worth noting that at this point, I haven't had any tip dry on the airbrush. Uh, it still seems to be spraying just fine. Now I haven't sprayed nearly as much paint as I did the other day with this uh, blue-green color, but you know, still uh, it's, it's going well enough that I think that uh, that maybe stray bits of, of lacquer thinner might have been the, uh, the culprit. Uh, and that's fine. I mean, a lot of acrylic paints, like uh, Vallejo, for example, Model Master Acrylic, they freak out if they come anywhere near lacquer thinner. So that's just, that's nothing new. I don't consider that a disadvantage. That's just the way it is. So anyway, let's put a blend coat on this. So there you go, I think I'm gonna stop with that. It's still pretty dramatic, but you get the idea. A couple of things to notice. It took me, I think, six layers to build that up to that much opacity, so I probably could have gotten away with uh, a, a less of the color blender. Uh, I'm also able to blow dry it with just air from my airbrush in between each layer, which is nice because that lets me work a little faster. Um, but overall, I think this is pretty cool. Uh, it definitely does what's advertised. Uh, you get that reduction in opacity, but uh, the paint's not breaking up, so that's good. I think it's a pretty cool product. Okay, I did not have any tip dry there either, so that's good. Now, that's what's left in the cup after I dumped it out. So, I'm gonna do exactly what Christian has recommended as far as cleaning. Let's just dump a little bit of water in there and... Well, 
Okay, so that was a little moment of stupidity right there, caught live. But hey, it's kind of interesting um, to see that it just did not immediately <laughs> ruin this paint. And it shouldn't because it is mostly water. So that's good, but I'm gonna dry this off with air as much as possible because I do have plans for this little piece and I don't want all that work to go to waste. <laughs> so there you go, a little bit of hijinks, Rube Goldberg style. That's how we run it out here. Do stupid stuff, figure out ways to fix it and improve your skills along the way and learn stuff. <laughs> well. Nothing to see here, folks. No reason to panic. <laughs> and I'll do the smart thing and set that aside from the paint booth so that we don't have any more disasters. Okay, so that's getting cleaned out of there fairly well. There's still, still a little bit of gunk in there, but it's not, it's not the problem that it was before. So, Again, I'm gonna just go back to my conclusion that it was my own fault. I had, uh, I had leftover lacquer thinner in the airbrush and that's what caused the uh, cleaning problems that I had before. So anyway, I'm gonna shut this camera off and finish cleaning up this mess. Okay, so it's a little later in the morning after shooting uh, some chrome paint and uh, doing some other things and it's a good time to have a look at some results uh, where we can see it a little bit better than it was possible to in my paint booth. If I can get some stuff out of the way here. Uh, okay, anyway, should get rid of my optivizer. Sorry, I'm disorganized as usual. Okay, so first thing first, uh, yesterday, within about half an hour of uh, shooting this, uh, these colors uh, and doing the, uh, the blend layer on this gray and some post shading, I, I of course could not resist <laughs> uh, immediately abusing the paint. I mean, that's just kind of my standard testing procedure. Uh, I like to see what the paint will hold up to, so. I like to scratch it, sand it, chip it, um, put decals directly on it, put washes directly on it, you know, basically uh, all of those things uh, that represent, um, for some people, worst case scenario, but for me, a lot of the normal way that I work, because I do prefer to work directly on the paint and do actual abuse. So. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, pretty interesting results. Uh, this stuff reminds me a lot of the Mission Models paints without the polyurethane in it. Um, it is relatively uh, fragile. I mean, that's what you would expect from a, from a water-based acrylic. So, yeah, you know, that is what it is. It, that's the negative with, with these acrylic materials. Uh, just like with lacquers, the negative is the, the fumes and the smell. So. You just kind of have to pick your poison, but you can see I can scratch that off of there with my fingernail. And this has, you know, been on there for a good 24, maybe 48 hours, I guess. Um, 24, yeah, I did it yesterday. So anyway, it is what it is. And uh, as long as you know that going in, it's not a big deal. And you can use it to your advantage. I did all of this chipping right here without the benefit of any chipping fluid. I just used various sandpapers and little wooden sticks and things just to kind of pick at it. And um, uh, some of it, I used one of my uh, rough little chipping brushes with just a little bit of spit on the end of it. And it definitely starts coming off quickly when you in introduce a little bit of moisture. I had this section masked off 
And when I pulled the tape, again, not worrying about doing it correctly, you can see I yanked off a, a chunk of paint right past the primer uh, there. So again, standard stuff with uh, water-based acrylics. Uh, that would not be a, a showstopper for me. You just have to take that into account. Uh, next thing I always like to do is uh, put some decals directly on and see what type of uh, reaction, if any, I get to decal setting solutions. <laughs> and this, uh, phew, wow, this turned into a little experiment of its own. I, uh, and this is probably gonna end up being another video of its own as well, because if you guys have watched my videos, you know that I have a particular way of applying decals. I keep it really simple. I use my jar of room temperature water that's mixed up 10 or 20% with a micro set, which is basically just white vinegar. And I generally go straight to solve a set, unless I know the decal is, is thin enough that I only need to use micro sol. And I take pride in the fact that I don't, I don't fear decals. I can handle Tamiya decals, whatever. And I have a, a, a successfully applied Tamiya decals using exactly that method. In fact, this is kind of my standard, uh, let's see here if I can find it anywhere in here. Eh, I think it might have gotten painted over at some point. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I have a, uh, a pretty good example of putting a Tamiya decal on using exactly that method and uh, getting great results. No silvering, nothing. And I'm a total non-believer in the idea that you have to gloss before decals based on the idea that it prevents silvering because it does not. That's an old wives tale. <laughs> But I have met my match uh, on decals with this. I've got the Academy, uh, formerly Accurate Miniatures, uh, 148th B25 Mitchell, and I just clipped a couple decals off of this sheet because they're not gonna get used. Uh, because, let's face it, the best way to avoid decal problems, especially with Insignia, is to not use them and mask and paint instead. I knew something was going to be uh, wrong as soon as I got those decals out of the water because they came off the paper very quickly and I ended up fishing them out of the jar with my finger and they felt very stiff and crackly. And when I did my standard thing of putting them on, uh, force, you know, using a damp Q-tip to force the water and air out from under them and then hitting them with a, I mean, I slathered the Salva set on there because this was a worst case test to see if it would screw up this paint. <laughs> they just kind of sat there and sat there and sat there for like an hour and didn't even wrinkle. But they were um, curly, if that makes sense, especially around the edges. And there was all kinds of bubbling and silvering, especially on this one. It was horrible. So I hit it with Solva Set several times. Nothing didn't even wrinkle. The decal was like, screw you, bring it. So I said, fine. I got some, I got out some uh, uh, straight 99% IPA and put it on there. Again, nothing. Not even the slightest hint of a wrinkle. So I thought, fine, I got something for you. I put some X20A on the decals. Dude, it was like water off a duck's back. No reaction whatsoever. So I said, fine, I'll see your X20A and I'll raise you Tamiya lacquer thinner. <laughs> and I put liberal layers of Tamiya lacquer thinner on both decals, didn't do a whole lot. And keep in mind that at this point, I had scored the panel lines on that one and uh, popped the bubbles and done everything I could think of. Again, Tammy lacquer thinner, pfft, didn't even phase it. So I said, fine, all right, I got you. And I just got my regular full-strength hardware store lacquer thinner that I use to clean my airbrush. 
and I put, I'm not kidding you guys, I put a solid layer of that stuff on both of these and just let them sit there. And it did finally start to snuggle down, but it had so many bubbles sticking out of it that it looked like, I mean, it looked like, it looked like a, it had a bad, a bad sunburn with lots of blisters. It was horrible. So I actually got my Rosie the Riveter tool and basically just ran it across there and put little holes in, in every little bubble, did another layer of straight lacquer thinner. And by this morning, I was down to, I don't know, maybe 10, 12, 15 bubbles. And so I literally stabbed a hole in each one of them with the tip of my hobby knife and put Tamiya Extra Thin on each of those little bubbles. And that was about two hours ago, and you can see what the result is. <laughs> I mean, this is just phenomenal. I, I think I have definitely found the worst decal in the history of decals. Uh, unbelievable. Um, so, anyway, uh, that's that. The good news is that I didn't screw up the paint on any of this. You can see that there are some tide marks a little bit around the edge, but I was careful not to allow too much of those substances to get on the paint. Um, but, you know, for the most part, all things considered, <laughs> this is great success. Uh, so anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just run some sandpaper on that to uh, knock those bubbles down and then move on with the next thing which will be to uh, go ahead and put a gloss clear on this because I do want to test the uh, the acrylic uh, X100 and X10 so anyway that'll be later today or tomorrow uh, let's see I also this morning did uh, a test which I just concluded with uh, another black basing application. And here's a better look at how that turned out. You guys saw the way that I created the, the, the random splotches and then promptly, uh, after I was done, spilled uh, water, a water alcohol blend cleaner all over it. But you can see it's all fine, no issues. And it, uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, so I'm pretty impressed with the... Uh, with the uh, uh, what he calls the color blender. I think it's probably similar to uh, the transpirator that uh, I think AK and MIG both maybe have that now, so not bad. Anyway, these two panels were the Illuminata and the regular aluminum, and no surprises there. I mean, they look fine. It's just uh, aluminum paint. Uh, it's a little more durable than uh, than this stuff is. Well, that seems to be holding on pretty well, uh, even with the thumbnail, so uh, that's good. Uh, that's a little bit, that one's a little bit softer. Uh, I, this is, I can't remember which is which. This, I believe, is the regular number 15 aluminum, but, but not too bad. Both of those pretty much do what you would expect. Now, this is the piece that I sprayed the chrome uh, 61 and the uh, chrome steel on. And these are a little bit baffling to me. Uh, again, he, the, the, the labeling on some of this stuff is, is a little confusing. Because if I just looked at these, I would expect this darker one to be the steel one. But it's not. This is the chrome steel. This is the regular chrome. It doesn't really matter as long as you get what you're looking for, but the real question now is, these have been sitting here for 24 hours and the chrome allegedly is supposed to get a little better. Um, now, you can see that this has a pretty nice level of reflectivity when I do the, the, the Rube Goldberg calibrated fingernail mirror reflection test. Not bad at all. Uh, I, you know, it reminds me a lot of uh, of all clad chrome. Not quite as chromey as all clad chrome, um, but not bad. This other one here, not quite as as reflective. But here's the key thing: 
What's going to happen when I start rubbing on this thing with my finger? Is it going to come off of there the way that all clad chrome does? Because we know that stuff is super fragile. And there you go. You just saw me rubbing on it. And there is some on my finger. There's no doubt. Um, let's rub some more. This is not coming off as easy as all clad chrome is. No doubt, it's not coming off as easy. It is starting to come off. I mean, I am starting to rub through it. You can see that right there. But nowhere near as bad. Let's do it with a, a, a little uh, rag here, because for whatever reason, that seems to be tougher. And definitely with all clad, I've noticed that when you do this, it, it comes off pretty, pretty readily. And I'm pushing hard. You can't really hear it, but I'm, it's squeaking a little bit because I'm pushing hard. And that is, that is not coming off to any significant degree. I mean, you can see it is starting to. So that's pretty dramatic. That's pretty interesting. I, I definitely was skeptical that it would be any more durable than, than, than all clad. So that is pretty cool. You guys saw it right here. Also of interest is this over here, which was sprayed on the still fingerprintable, allegedly lacquer stuff. It is definitely not as chromey, and you can see all the flaws and fingerprints there. So I, you know, I hate to say it, but I'm blowing off their, their lacquer stuff. This combination of of uh, of the uh, of their gloss black acrylic base and their chrome is possibly the most interesting result out of this entire test. That's pretty cool. Let's do this because I know you guys are all wondering. Let's stick some masking tape on it. Get out a piece of my MT washi tape and let's just. Go ahead and let's just, here, I need to adjust my camera angle a little bit. Let's just get that nice and burnished down on there. And uh, just for posterity, we'll let that sit for a minute while, uh, I talk about uh, this other result. You can see this is where I sprayed the uh, chrome finishes on the not uh, very well applied or polished uh, gloss black acrylic base. And you can see it has decent reflectivity, but, but not, not nearly as good as it does on the other surface. So like you would expect with any chrome type finish, it's all about how well you apply that gloss black base. Now, speaking of that, I had to uh, do kind of a baseline comparison with putting uh, K-Colors Chrome on top of Gun's GX2 gloss black because as far as I'm concerned, it's the standard for a gloss black base. Um, it, 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 it comes out of, the, out of the airbrush just beautifully if you spray it wet and put it straight on plastic. So I shot some of their chrome stuff on uh, this piece and uh, did that this morning. So I want to give it 12 hours before we really start uh, poking at it and seeing how durable it is. But just as a comparison, uh, let's take a corner over here and see what happens when I start rubbing on this. This was sprayed... Um, I'd say hour ago, maybe a little bit more, and you can see I definitely uh, I definitely rubbed that right off of there with my thumb, not not too difficult at all. So that certainly lends credence to what Christian has said about giving it uh, giving it 12 hours. The other thing that's kind of interesting is I played with different uh, different layer thicknesses on this piece, and you can see that the reflectivity is, is really pretty impressive. 
But this is one of those kind of things where it looks a lot better from, from three feet away than it does from uh, optivisor distance. This looks good, right? But what I noticed is that when you really, really zoom in on it, and maybe the camera will be able to show this, is it looks a little grainy. Now, okay, I gotta make some more space on my camera. Hold on, guys, I'll be right back. Okay, <laughs> that's what happens with these paint tests. They involve a lot of footage and, yeah, unfortunately a lot of editing. And yeah, it's gonna be another long one, but whatever. Anyway, what I was saying is, when you really look closely at this, it looks a little bit grainy. But, when you look at it under high magnification, it's not actually grainy. The surface is smooth. But what's happening is that there are very, very small gaps in the coverage. And that, quite frankly, is part of how you get that higher uh, level of reflectivity and a harder reflection is because there's still some of that gloss black base showing through. So over here, I uh, this is, by the way, this is two layers here, three layers here. You can see some difference in the, in the coverage. Over here, I really played around with it. And again, this is the steel one, not the aluminum one, uh, or a regular chrome one. This is five or six layers right here. You can see, still really good reflectivity. This is three or four layers, and this is three or four layers. So you can see the difference in the coverage, though. Uh, that grainy appearance is much less there than it is there. So, kind of good to know. Um, I did spray very dry layers, which is what uh, Christian recommends, and which is really the same as other chrome finishes. And uh, I dried each layer using uh, just air from my airbrush uh, as I was going. So uh, anyway, I, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. This, uh, this chrome stuff is, is very interesting and very compelling. So anyway, um, I'm going to uh, let the, uh, let this, uh, last test piece, this one right here, I'm going to let it just hang out until tomorrow. Uh, and in the meantime, either today or tomorrow, I will go ahead and spray some of the uh, clear acrylic on this piece. Uh, but before I wrap this little clip up, let's see what happens when I yank this tape off of here. And it is pretty stuck. And pretty much did not rip any of this chrome off. And what you really have to do is look at the tape itself to see how much uh, came off. Look, that's basically none. That is impressive. If you guys watched my F86 adventure, you know that uh, I showed uh, when I used this that a lot of chrome pigment uh, of, from the all clad came off on the tape and in fact I used that as a as a weathering technique <laughs> uh, so uh, very very interesting result with this stuff pretty cool I have a feeling this is gonna be popular okay gang uh, just uh, a quick results check-in on day four or five or 55 or whatever it is of this little test of gay color stuff. Um, I, I've been fully into the doing things to the paint portion of the test. And one of the things that I definitely wanted to try with this chrome stuff was to see if I could run Tamiya uh, panel line wash uh, on it without any ill effects. And I was totally able to. Um, a very light swipe of a Q-tip that was just barely damp with mineral spirits was enough to remove the spots where I touched the brush uh, with no issue. Um, and it took a little bit of rubbing and scrubbing with that same uh, mineral spirits dampened Q-tip before I started uh, uh, getting through the paint. So I think that's a pretty good sign right there as far as uh, you know, in terms of, of things you can do with that paint. Now this paint seems to be 
pretty much impervious to everything except uh, direct physical abuse like I showed you. I've been doing uh, quite a bit of, of oil paint rendering on this, uh, well beyond what was really needed to demonstrate that the paint was fine with it, but also just because I just am practicing. And uh, this is a good opportunity to do that. So I've got uh, lots, of, uh, lots of oils on there, lots of work, faded out the decal, just uh, basically going through the same process I would if this were real and practicing all the steps um, and, and experimenting with a couple of things as well. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, now I want to check this. This uh, has been uh, now cured for uh, 24 hours. I was able to rub that off with my thumb yesterday. So uh, let's now pick a spot and see what happens when we rub on it today. Um, and it's definitely rubbing off of there. Uh, whoops, I'm losing my sprue there. It's definitely rubbing off of there on that part. Let's see over here where we put it on nice and thick and see what happens. Yeah, I can definitely rub through it there, but it does take more effort because I've got like six layers right there as opposed to only two back there on the darker section. So I'm rubbing on this pretty hard and and yeah, it is coming off, but it does not come off as easily in my experience as all clad uh, 107 chrome does. So that's a good thing. Um, this kind of confirms what uh, Matt McDougall felt when he uh, did this same little test on top of the Guns GX2. So I think what we can conclude from this is that Guns GX2 as a pure lacquer is not at all uh, susceptible to being etched by this alcohol-based paint. Uh, whereas the uh, uh, gloss black acrylic base from K-Colors actually does open back up enough when you hit it with this stuff that it creates a much stronger bond. So uh, I think this is a really important conclusion. If you just tested it this way, you would come to the conclusion that it's not durable enough to make it any better than any of the other chrome uh, materials on the market. But uh, when you test it on top of its own gloss black base, uh, I think you come to a, a better conclusion. Um, it may still be a good idea to put a, a, clear, a clear coat on it, but I think you can definitely see the difference. So I've always been a proponent of using whichever gloss black base uh, is the best, and that's been GX2. But in the case of this particular paint, I think you have to redefine best um, and uh, go for the, the gloss black base that gives you almost as good reflectivity and much better durability. So there we go. Uh, tomorrow, after all of the layers of oil that are on that other piece have uh, had plenty of time to dry out, I will be uh, putting clear coat on some of those parts. Okay, so it is now uh, the next morning uh, on day whatever of <laughs> however many of this test has been going on, uh, like five or six. Anyway, um, yesterday I did the final bit of uh, oil weathering on this sample piece, and you could argue that I should have given it more time to cure out, but Again, I like to push it with these tests, and I've always found that uh, a day is, is enough for light oil work like this. There's not a lot of heavy deposits there that really should take forever to cure out, especially since it's pretty warm right now where I live. So anyway, we'll talk about these. Um, this is the one where I sprayed the, um, and I'm going to hold on to it with my thumb for the once again, calibrated thumbprint test. 
But anyway, this is the one that's got the XS100, what they call 1K uh, clear. Now, I'm led to believe that this is a lacquer, but honestly, when I smell this piece, um, it honestly smelled more like enamel. When I smell the bottle, it's a little less clear, but it does not smell like what I expect a lacquer to smell like. So again, pretty confusing. I also don't really like this 1K thing, but that's become pretty common. Um, look, 2K means two-part uh, urethane. It applies to urethanes where you have a resin and a catalyst system that you mix together to get a clear coat. So I guess technically you could call this 1K because it's one part, but I don't know. To me, that's just kind of silly. The fact is that as far as I know, it's a clear gloss lacquer. And I generally do not have a lot of use for clear gloss lacquers. I've tested a bunch of them and they all give pretty yeah, lukewarm results. Um, with the exception of Guns GX100. Once again, with Guns' GX line, they have figured out how to make a, a material that gives you a fantastic gloss right out of the bottle. Well, re it's got to be reduced. Um, it's too thick out of the bottle, but, but Guns GX100 is the closest thing you're going to get to a 2K clear urethane. Uh, in terms of shiny and slick straight out of the bottle. Uh, not perfect. It has a tendency to shrink over time uh, and, and may reveal the edges of decals. And it doesn't come out quite as perfect uh, out, of the, out of the gun as uh, like a U-Paul uh, or Gravity 2K Clear does. But still, GX2 is the standard, right? I mean, sorry, GX100 is the standard right now for a clear gloss lacquer and nothing else measures up to it this stuff whatever it is is somewhere in between something that i'm totally unimpressed with like zero's clear gloss lacquer and gx100 this is somewhere in between it's it's not quite as good you can see uh not quite as good as as gx100 that characteristic orange peel that you get when you have to lay down a bunch of wet layers is is there. Um, and, and I didn't show how I sprayed any of these clear glosses because there's really should be no surprises there. If you guys want to see how I spray a clear gloss, I have a, a video on how to uh, airbrush a clear gloss. Bottom line is that if you want a good slick finish, you got to lay down uh, wet coats and specifically one dry coat to get everything tacky and then in this case, I did three uh, real wet coats because I felt like that's what it, what it needed as I was working. Um, so anyway, you can polish out, you can sand and polish out that, um, that orange peel, but that's worse than what you get with GX100. So if I'm going to have to sand and polish, I want to obviously do the least amount of it. And so that's why for me, clear gloss lacquers just are not something I have a lot of use for because... They're overkill for a utility gloss uh, for like weathering or sealing your, your work or if you're one of the people who feels like you got to put a clear on before you decal. Um, they're overkill for that. Uh, and for a true automotive slick finish, they just don't do a good enough job for me. So anyway, um, but if you were going to use one, this this one is not is not too bad. Um, now, let me see what happens when I lift my thumb. Um, it, it, it's, it's, not, it's not bad. It, there's a little bit of a thumbprint there, but it's not melted in there and sticky the way the other, uh, other ones were. The clear, I mean, sorry, the, the clear black primer. The, the, the black lacquer primer and the black gloss base um, still aren't completely cured, um, but this was definitely not as sticky as those were, so... You know, I only sprayed this like an hour and a half ago, so that's not too bad. I'll see what it looks like tomorrow, but um, that's not too bad. Anyway, that's it for the XS100. The uh, next thing I sprayed was uh, the uh, acrylic cl clear gloss. And, you know, when you look at it in the bottle, this looks a lot like aqua gloss or various other polyurethane clear acrylics. Um, and it is. I mean, it's a bit thicker out of the bottle than Aqua Gloss is, but otherwise, 
it, it's almost indistinguishable. Uh, it, it basically produces the exact same effect. Um, I did hear what I you know, would normally do for a utility gloss, which was just throw down a couple of, of quick layers, not you know worrying too much about getting it on there super wet and super perfect. And you can see there's you know little bits of trash and and irregularities in there. But I would pretty much always expect to be giving this a quick rub down before I go on top of it with a uh, with uh, something like dull coat uh, or. MRP Super Clear Matte. Uh, those are my two lacquer ungloss materials of choice. Now in this case, I'm going to be hitting it with the uh, with their with K Colors Clear Acrylic Flat because I want to test that. Um, but uh, I prefer in general to use as few clear coats as possible for work like this. Uh, be partly because they're 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 just not needed. Um, I don't decal on top of a clear coat. I don't weather on top of a clear coat. I do all that stuff straight to the paint as much as possible. So when I do put on a gloss clear like X22 um, or Aqua Gloss, it's purely to give me a good hard shell protective layer on this. Uh, that I can then come on top of with my final uh, flat clear um, uh, to get the finish that I want. And, and, and that gloss clear is basically on there just to guarantee that this thing can be handled uh, confidently for everything I'm going to do after that. You know, uh, any last bit of, of pigments that I want to use on top of the flat clear, uh, photography, carrying it to my shelf, you know, whatever. I just want to make sure I can handle this thing uh, safely. And sometimes there's some final assembly that has to be done after this stage as well, like adding antenna wires or uh, landing gear, things like that. So again, that's really the only reason I'm going to use a gloss clear like this in the first place. Um, but one other purpose that it sometimes can serve is when you've got a really crappy decal like these two are, and there's a bunch of irregularities from all the gyrations you had to do to get it to lay down. And it's got a pretty gross looking edge for the, from the carrier film. One thing you can do is pile on a bunch of clear uh, acrylic. You can even do it with a brush. Because then what I'm going to do is come back and I'm going to sand this down flush to try and blend all that in so that it's at least level uh, with the surrounding surface before I hit it with a, a clear flat. And you can do that as many times as you need to to get it blended in. And it's a pretty effective technique for uh, dealing with uh, a, the edge of, uh, of the clear film. Now in this case, I don't know how successful I'll be because you can see where it's just really bad like there on that decal because the decal was just so curly and, and badly behaved. But uh, anyway, it's also nice because it helps the contrast pop, so all that oil weathering that I did uh, is looking pretty tasty right now. Um, so anyway, I'm going to just set that aside until tomorrow, and I will put some, uh, do some sanding and, and do a flat on it uh, tomorrow. Now the other big question is, what does the clear gloss do to the chrome colors? And Christian was specifically asking me if uh, it reduced the reflectivity. I don't think it does. I don't know that you can really tell the difference in the calibrated fingernail test between yesterday and today. And for a chrome type finish, I don't think this is too bad. It's not my favorite thing because the bottom line is a clear gloss looks like clear gloss. It's kind of plasticky and it no longer looks like metallic chrome, uh, which is obviously what you want. So. That's again one reason why I try to avoid clear coats on top of, of metallics as much as possible. For something that's intended to have a polished or a chrome look, it's appropriate because you want that slick, uh, pure shine, reflectivity, whatever you want to call it. And so it makes sense. But if you do that on top of a finish that is less specular, like this over here for example, um, or like just a, a basic aluminum 
paint, whether it's lacquer or acrylic, it just looks totally wrong if you come back and put a gloss on it. It ends up looking like a gloss silver paint job. So I just don't think it's appropriate and I don't think it's, it's necessary most of the time. So, um, you know, this is not a bad representation of, of polished steel, even though this one is supposed to be the regular chrome. I just think it's a little too dark gray for me and I would I'd probably choose this one, which is called, uh, oh wait, this is the one that's called steel. This is the one that's called pure chrome. Um, I would probably choose this one if I were trying to replicate uh, chrome. Um, but uh, look, any of these paints that attempt to replicate pure chrome really fail because chrome is, is chrome. I mean, look, this is chrome. That is chrome paint. Uh, the tone is not too far off, but the reflectivity, the specularity is, is just never going to be there. Um, on the other hand, if what you want to duplicate is polished aluminum, well, that's what that is, and that's uh, a pretty decent, uh, a, a pretty decent approximation of of polished aluminum. So, again, um, I think these paints are pretty effective for that, and um, if you're going to use it on top of uh, Guns GX2 for your gloss black base then you really are going to have to put that clear coat on there uh, to bring the durability up to uh, anything that's acceptable. So anyway, there weren't really a lot of surprises with this um, other than how, how durable the uh, chrome was all by itself when I used it on top of the K-Colors gloss black acrylic base. So anyway, there you go. That's where we're at and we are getting close to the end of this test. Okay, so it is all done, finally, after <laughs> two and a half, nearly three hours of video. Uh, I'm sure you guys are even more relieved than I am. Um, anyway, there's not really a whole lot more left to say. Um, I haven't done anything more with any of these pieces here except for uh, this one. Uh, this is... Um, the piece obviously that I did a lot of oil rendering to and then did a gloss clear on. And the only thing that's different between now and the last time I showed it to you is that I did sand it out and put their uh, acrylic uh, flat coat on it. And you can see uh, that it is pretty nice. It's not just dead, dead flat uh, like maybe MRP uh, uh, super clear flat is, or definitely not like AK Ultra Mat, um, but it is pretty flat. Uh, it's a nice uniform uh, finish. And you can see um, that I was able to work the edges of those decals using the strategy that I outlined before to get, uh, you know, not a horrible result. I just eventually got tired of screwing with it because, again, this is nothing more than a demonstration piece. Um, but that gives you a pretty good idea of, of I think, what's possible with the, uh, the paints and the clear coats. Okay, so there you go. Huh, that was long and brutal, I know. But like I said at the beginning, um, I, it's, you know, I really believe in being as thorough and methodical about these paint tests as I know how to be. And while that's not always exciting, I do think that it's good for people to be able to see how the paint is used and how it was tested and what the conditions were and all of those things um, so that at least we're all able to hopefully talk about it more intelligently because we all know that in model making forums the mythology and misinformation about paints runs rampant um, and it's a pet peeve of mine so that is uh, why I try to be as thorough as I can with these things. Anyway. What are my final conclusions? Um, it's pretty simple. I think this is really good paint. It reminds me a lot of the Mission Models acrylics, um, but maybe a little less complicated because you don't have these real specific mixing ratios and a polyurethane additive and, and all of that business. Um, these acrylic paints spray very nicely straight out of the bottle. Um, and they do seem to have a really nice selection of colors. I was 
very impressed with the uh, chrome and the acrylic gloss black base. I mean, that might have been the most significant result of the entire test. And I think a lot of people are going to be wanting to check that out. Um, their primer, not too bad. I don't think that it's any better than Steinle Res, uh, also sold as uh, UMP primer, which I think is really the benchmark for acrylic primers right now. Um, but it's not bad. I mean, it's totally usable stuff, and I could certainly recommend it. Um, the uh, lacquer stuff was not really a good result with this test. Um, I don't know, you know what the deal was, but if you guys watched the whole thing, you saw exactly what I did, so I'm not sure what I could have done differently. Uh, the bottom line is they did none of the uh, uh, lacquers uh, really ever cured out very well, which to me is... Um, makes me think more of an enamel than a lacquer because I think one of the main characteristics of lacquers is that they do dry fast. So a little sketchy on on the uh, on the lacquers, but uh, I you know I don't I don't think that that's going to make or break these guys. And Christian has totally demonstrated already that he's listening to the customers, and um, he probably is going to send me some new samples to address what may have been some production issues on some of those, uh, like the primer, for example, that did not uh, work well in the test. So I think all you have to do, though, is really focus on the acrylics to conclude that this is a pretty interesting line of paint. Um, and if I were looking for an acrylic paint system, I would have to give it serious consideration. So um, that's, that's, uh, that's how I see it. The one thing, the one beef that I do have really is more about documentation. Um, and I'm always going to push on this. It's probably never going to be good enough for me because I do see so much misinformation out there. And, I, and I've really asked Christian, and I hope, he'll, <laughs> I hope he'll give this some consideration, to really stop talking about this in terms of solvent base. Because... That's just a word that just means too many things to too many people. And in, a, in, a, in, a, in an activity where you have to sort of be uh, uh, precise about your language so that you get correct usage and therefore successful results, I think it's really important to break these things down into things that they into what they really are. That's why I get annoyed when people just talk about paint thinner. Because <laughs> paint thinner can be a number of different things. So I hope he, he stops putting you know uh, things in terms of solvent base or water base or alcohol base. Uh, alcohol base and water base, that's great. That's the kind of thing we need to know. But solvent base, yeah, it's just too ambiguous and I hope that it will uh, that he'll that he'll call it either lacquer or acryl or enamel, uh, whatever it is. Anyway, um, that's my only beef with the thing. I think it's good paint, um, and I would encourage you guys to uh, check it out for yourselves. Uh, hopefully, you found all of this long drawn out testing to be uh, objective and informative. All right, guys, if you put up with the whole thing, I really do appreciate it. Much love. Take care.